Well, there's ugly, and then there's this. Look at the state of this. Oddly enough, the back opens. A little bit short on paint here. Bit of grit and rubbish falling out of here. I think that's probably just corroded aluminium. So, what have we got here? Let's find out. I haven't tried anything yet. Well, the focus adjustment moves. The film advance knob moves. The rewind knob moves. The frame counter setting lever here, that moves. The film advance locks. It unlocks. It's not interested in locking again. Some serious size bumps there. Very serious. Depth of field scale on the base. All in German. Focus scale. All metric. Retina Zena. I can turn the shutter speed setting ring. Let's set it to something non-controversial like a hundred. It doesn't stay cocked. Now oh, let's pull that out. Still doesn't stay cocked. How are the blades opening and closing? Let's see if we can see any light through there. Yeah, it looks like that opens and closes to me. Yeah, so the shutter blades move. Do the diaphragm blades move? They do. So, it looks like we have a few things sticking. But, um... Potentially, the makings of a working camera. Let's unscrew that. Here's our shutter release plunger. That works well enough. This would have to be probably the ugliest. Retina 1 type 119 that I've ever set eyes on, I think. I did rebuild one many years ago, and that was pretty ugly, but uh, this beats it by a good wide margin. So, I might have to go for a uh, An easy win on this, I think. Start with something that looks promising. And I think I'll remove the shutter. And uh, have a look at that. I'm sure that you've been told many times in the past, and I'm probably one of the people who've told you, you never put oil or stuff like that on cameras generally. But... Desperate times require desperate measures. So, 
there's no danger I'm going to get that retaining ring off the back of the shutter as it currently sits given the level of corrosion. So CRC 556 basically it's the same stuff as WD40 and what I want to do is make sure that I get some down here where the retaining ring runs on the back of the shutter and it, a few drops is all it's going to take and then I'll leave this, I'm not going to be doing anything with this oh that's more than a few drops I'll do nothing with this today I'll put this aside for a couple of days and then I'll come back and I am very hopeful that I'll take my retaining ring spanner and that ring will just come loose but we'll wait and see well let's see if this CRC has done any good I would have to say that that's not looking hopeful. So, a bit more dismantling work I think before I can get that thing apart. Well it looks like I spoke too soon. I've got some movement on that retaining ring, just not a lot. So I'm going to put a bit more CRC in there and uh, Work that thread and see what happens. I'll report back. Well, it's fighting all the way. So what I want to do is remove the front ring from the shutter so I can remove the shutter release and the cocking arm there and I'll remove the shutter release button there. I've got a ring here which will clamp firmly on that lens which doesn't want to unscrew, surprise surprise and in order to get that over here firmly I need to remove the little Kodak sign which is preventing me getting that clamped in place that just allows me a little bit of extra access here for this thing Check that's pushed down over there. Slide that back out of the way. That looks good. And if I do up this hose clamp very tight, it should give me a good grip on that lens. Yeah, so that lens is now loose. It wouldn't come loose with my fingers. And there's not really any other way to grip those things. So the lens is off. The front grip. I'll just rotate this latch out of the way. And this should lift off. Take the front uh, shutter speed settings cam plate off. See a little bit of rust on the shutter release there. It's not too bad. Just release the spring from the cocking lever. I'm going to have to take out some more stuff here so I can lift this out. I'll take out that post. The screw there is loose, I already noted that. And 
lever should pop out. It does. There's the 500th of a second speed spring. Our shutter release may come off that shaft now. It's a bit stiff. There's a bit of rust on that shaft. It's uh, put a drop of the magic fluid on there. Yeah, looks like that's going to lift off. Right, so we've got the shutter release and so forth off there now. It means they're not out here where they can get easily damaged while I'm trying to fight that ring off the back of the shutter. Let's put this back on. And I'll just lock that on there just to keep the shutter contained while I'm fighting with it. That's much better. I'm not in any danger of damaging these parts now. I'd like to remove the door if I can. To do that I've got to remove the knob from the top of the camera which could be a problem. I've got a hold the shaft from turning on the inside. You can see the flat on that shaft there. But you hold that, stop that from turning while I rotate the knob. They almost invariably won't undo with your fingers unless someone has just loosened them up. But we'll find out. I've got this loose now. Basically I use that clamp and uh, It enabled me to turn this thing. Of course this is left hand threaded. Basically I've got that clamp on there really hard. It's got a bit of rubber in there between it and the knob. I clamped this in the vise, bench vise, and then used a spanner I'd already had on the flats there to turn it. And it required a considerable good considerable degree of force to get that thing to move. It was reluctant. But now it's coming off. So we'll carry on taking this top off. There's certainly a few dents and marks on this top cover. Okay. So what I'm most interested in here is removing the door from the front and I hope to achieve that by removing the pivot screw at this point and then wiggling the other one out of the hole in the bottom of the casting. That should work. I'll just put that back on there to keep these works in place. Let's have a look at these while we're here. Because the film advance wasn't working particularly well, was it? This is not rotating at all. Yeah, alright. It's all going to come off anyway in the fullness of time. Let's have a look at this tiny screw here. The pivot screw for the door, the hinge screw if you like. Is it loose? Yes, looks like it is. 
take that out. Now I should be able to wiggle the door out at the top. I've got this partly closed. Wiggle the hinge out at the top like that. Then with a bit of juggling I can pull it out at the bottom. There's a strong spring here that acts to open that door. Watch that if you've got a pretty camera because it'll scratch the, mark, the body down here. Alright that's okay. Now I've just got to lift this off here. Which is usually not much of a problem. That's the door out of the way. Now I've got good access to the shutter body. I've got I can get a good grip on that now while I'm working the retaining ring from the back. Being this far in we might as well strip the film advance mechanism. It's worth taking note of the order all of these components come off in. There's a disc. It's got a raised central point which points upwards. One screw in the middle of that frame counter disc. Now watch the pieces under there. Here's our frame counter disc, all covered in nasty grease. Here is this star-shaped washer. It's vaguely cup-shaped. This piece should lift off. It's probably stuck with grease. It is stuck with grease. This is a two-piece arrangement. Actually it's three pieces if you count this little washer underneath it. Let's get that off there so you can see the washer. That's stuck. Here is the washer that goes underneath it, and here is a little gear that goes underneath that. The little arm here moves our frame counter. It's got a spring on the bottom of it. I've just unhooked that spring. Let's take that screw out, and I can lift the arm off. one screw here. You need to watch the arrangement of levers and spacer washers or anything else like that. There's that screw. Here's the lever. This lever's got a spring acting against it right there. Well, it's off now. It's got a washer underneath. This washer goes between the, that lever we've just taken off and this lever at the base. And this lever should lift off too with a bit of, bit of wriggling. Okay. I'm going to take that screw out there because there's a spring on it. And I don't want to damage the spring. So if I take it off completely, we're safe. A single screw holds this shifting piece here. That's a piece that shifts the camera into the uh, rewind position. Take a note of the screw that came out of that and we'll lift this piece off. This lever here is held in with a single screw in the middle. It's a shoulder screw. That lever is always a little bit stiff. It's meant to be a little bit stiff. It doesn't need to rattle backwards and forwards. Okay, so make note of the direction of the teeth on that wheel there. There are two wheels, one below the other here. Let's get those off. Sometimes they'll come off easily. All right. That's our top one. These gears look in good order. There's a 
flat space the washer between them. There's another gear here. Now its teeth run in the opposite direction. This may be stuck on here quite hard. I think I can get under that now. You do with a wedge here. It's starting. Okay, so that comes off. Flat washer underneath it, which might be a little bit bent now that we've been fighting over it. Three screws here hold this bush in place on the body. And in the bush we have our advanced shaft. This is very dry and gritty feeling. There's nothing else in there, there's no uh, anti-backup spring or anything. The take-up spool can be lifted out of the body. I want to take out this shaft, the sprocket shaft. There are two tiny screws there. Hope they don't choose today to be a good day to fight. No, that one's moving. Now take note there's a washer here at the top between this piece and there. I don't know whether these screws are going to come all the way out. On some cameras they do and on others they don't. Yeah, that's certainly moving on the shaft. Not so sure about its mate. Okay, see if this shaft will lift out now. It's coming up. Take the shaft out. There's the piece from the bottom. Run that screw back in so it doesn't get lost. Here's the little sprocket wheel from the top. Again I'm doing the same thing. I'm running that screw back in so it doesn't get lost. There's the washer I was talking about and the shaft comes out. What, we, what can we do next? The rewind knob. They're not usually as bad as the advanced knob to get off, but uh, with this camera anything's a possibility. So something through the fork of the rewind to stop it turning. And the rewind knob should just unscrew from the shaft. like that. Two screws here holding that bush into the top of the body. Most of these fasteners are coming out fairly easily. Much easier than I had any reason to expect. I'll pull these apart. They're a bit uh, 
dirty looking. Let's take the finder off the top. So there are two screws, one from each side. They're quite small, make a point of not losing them. Lift the finder off. Here's our finder. So we've got the housing, we've got the front glass, the rear glass, and there's a spring arrangement in there which holds those two in place. We can take that apart completely later. I'll take this piece off the top of the casting. I'm taking more off this camera than you might need to because the body is going to have to be stripped and painted because of the uh, corrosion has removed a good deal of the paint. So we'll take that off, take that plate off. This spring is held here with a single screw and I'll take that screw out rather than try and fight the spring over the top of the screw which won't go well. That leather is going to have to come off in the fullness of time. Now there is a washer under here. That was underneath our levers, underneath that lever. It's quite rusty looking, it'll need to be cleaned up quite a bit. But all that rubbish on the body just falls off, all that corrosion, that's not a problem. The door and the door hinge. I'm pretty sure these are riveted on, they are. I want to take the door off to work on it. I'm going to have to drive the pin out of the hinge. That's not a problem. I can, uh, I'm sure I can achieve that. It's probably not going to want to move much. So I'm going to use the CRC again. And that pin will have to be driven out which means you need a really small punch to get it started. Once you've got a little bit of it sticking out, five or six millimeters or something, about a quarter of an inch, you can get onto it with a pair of pliers and pull it the rest of the way. I think that'll probably drive from the top easier than driving it from the bottom. If I get the door off it'll make it easier for me to fight with this retaining ring on the front of the camera. It shouldn't be uh, causing me so much trouble. I have options at this stage. Let's take this depth of field scale off the base. That's not moving. I'll be removing the bellows completely. They're glued in of course, so normally I use acetone to uh, loosen up the adhesive and peel them gently away from the casting. Because I'm going to be removing the bellows, that gives me the option of removing the screws that hold the struts into the body removing the bellows and pulling the bellows out complete with the front standard so that I've got the whole front standard, shutter etc separate from the body and that'll make it much easier for me to deal with. What I'm probably going to end up doing here I would think is using this tool on the retaining ring clamped in a vise like that clamped upwards on the, in a vice like that so it can't turn and then use a pair of uh, rubber gloves to give me more grip on this shutter body as I unscrew it from the ring that's been held by this. I can certainly achieve it if I take the door off the camera. I don't want this flapping around waiting to get damaged because most certainly it will get damaged. 
if it's flapping about when I'm busy working on it. Alright, I've got a little punch here, let's see if that will move. It's moving, it's very reluctant. The pin's certainly not straight at this end, so the whole pin may have a bit of a twist in it, which will make it reluctant to move all the way through. Right, a pair of pliers on that I think next. Back when I'm done. Well that's it. The end of the pin doesn't look very pretty but uh, that can, that'll be hidden, we won't know about it. No one will know. Alright, so I can take the back door off now. And I will go away down to the workshop. Stick the tool in the vise. Put the shutter body on over the top and hope to be able to rotate the shutter to unscrew it.